hi everyone. Um, this is now episode um four, and we obviously have uh, Kim Sullivan here, but we have a very special gentleman with us here, here today. One of the very first bees. It's Mr. Stuart Hillard. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Alistair. And very well, thank you. And thrilled, thrilled to join you to talk all things sewing bee. Yeah, it was a it was a very um I must admit, it's not my favorite um section of the sewing bee, the whole recycle, reuse, um, repurpose, da da la la la. Um so um obviously they have the three um challenges. Um we know that um Matthew unfortunately went out uh, last night. Um, so, what did everybody think of um, how the program went last night? You want to go first, Stuart? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Well, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as as, as always. Um, I I like the reduce, reuse, recycle. I think it's very very hard to get a subject like that right isn't it because almost whatever you do you sort of you'll 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 get it wrong somehow you know but I think the principle the idea of recycling reusing repurposing is fabulous and and everyone should be aiming to do as much of that as they can you know um Obviously, I come at it from the point of view of a quilter. And of course, quilts were always made or often made with your dressmaking remnants and off cuts. And quilts were reused when they got worn out and used to be the filling for another quilt. And so, you know, we come from a long line of reusers. So, mm -hmm. so I like the principle. Um, do they always get it right? No, but but I, I enjoyed the show very much. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was a good one. Um, I was very sad to see Matthew go at the end, but I mean, we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, some good moments for me. I think what is a little bit unfair, and I think we've said about said this previously, is it's not always a level playing field. So, for example. With the tote bags, the challenge was in relation to colour and it's fastest, it's, you know, who can get to that rack or that that pile of tote bags first mm -hmm. to get the choices. And I said to Alistair earlier, what I might like is a colour combination, maybe the Esmes and the Patricks and other people and you wouldn't like my colour color palette. And then similarly, the that challenge at the end you can get all sorts of different yarns, all sorts of different thicknesses, all sorts of different crochet blankets. It didn't feel as if it was a level playing field. And so, and sometimes the, the fabric choices, even the first choice, um, they had provided end of rolls, which mm. we all know department stores may get rid of the huge rolls or factories get rid of the huge rolls, but smaller shops may buy those up. They put all those fabrics on the floor and then um, I think it was Faye picked up one that was very, very drapey. Really, it was too drapey for the challenge. Why was that particular bolt left there? It was pretty and that's what she went for rather mm. than she needed a, a, a slightly heavier fabric. I suppose it, that's part of the challenge, isn't it? That, you know, it's about, yes, there's all that different choice there and it's about did you make the right choice? You know, um, I, I'm not, I wouldn't want the show to start spoon feeding mm -hmm. contestants so that they couldn't make a bad choice because of course you know it's making the right choice is part of the the means to a successful outcome mm -hmm. um and it's a bit of a test isn't it the same with the zero waste trousers well it was what was the zero waste trousers you know you've got to choose the right sort of fabric to make to make those trousers do you think all that because the time limit, this this is always the big issue, isn't it? The time restriction. So I think they have is it three hours on the first one. That choice of fabric, you know what you like. We're all going to the quilt shops or the fabric shops. We do not make a decision like that. You first of no. all we'll go to a fabric and think, I love that design. And then you you feel it or you, you look at the label and it isn't the correct fabric for the job you wanted to do mm. now you've been on the sewing bay and I know it was a long time ago but was that choosing of the fabrics and the products 
within your three hour oh Oh. gosh absolutely absolutely yes yes um and that and that's all part of it isn't it because you know at the end of the day first and foremost the sewing bee is an entertainment show Mm -hmm. it is a drama it is a soap opera and somewhere in that it's a sewing show as well but I wouldn't ever say that the sewing bee first and foremost was a was was all about the sewing it's about the relationships the characters the development the story um the dramas and so you know because otherwise if you if if they went for that level playing field they would say to everybody okay everyone's going to use plain navy cotton mm-hmm. and you're all going to make the same pair of trousers And then we'll mark it like, you know, O-level needlework. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, in some ways, that is what the first series was like. Mm -hmm. Um, It was, there was, there was um, almost 100% emphasis at the start, as we started filming, on technical skills. And it was, there was almost nothing about, flair or creativity or being exciting or making bold choices it was very much about the technicalities are are these darts perfect is this hem level you know all the kind of things that somebody would mark for an exam and not an exciting competition and um certainly I as somebody who at the time really did not dress make I went in thinking, well, how on earth am I going to represent myself and compete? How do I make this a level playing field that I can compete Mm -hmm. in? Because Mm -hmm. I cannot compete with the likes of Anne and Lauren and, and, well, everybody actually um, there on technical dressmaking ability. So the only thing that I could do was to draw on my creativity and boldness and, and you know, ideas and try and turn the judges away from only seeing the perfection of the darts or the level hem and, and so on. Now there's a problem with that. And I think, you know, last night's show was a, was a good example of where sometimes um, uh, a contestant's bold choices or just their choices, their Mm -hmm. taste, jars with what the judge is like, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, Mm -hmm. know, Patrick has got certain likes and dislikes and we all know what they are. We know what what ticks Esme's boxes and what, what disappoints her. Should it be about that? Should somebody get criticised because Patrick doesn't like ditzy florals and and Esme only likes really big bows? You decide. You decide. I, <clears throat> for me, I just think <clears throat> because obviously it is an entertainment show, um, and obviously I'm coming from it from a couturier's point of view, um, and it's it's very difficult for me to sort of not critique the show in terms of exactly what you're saying like for instance um if someone isn't as technical because obviously the pattern that's given they are saying that we're you know where where the pitfalls are um in terms of at the beginning of the section and you know what could go wrong and and what they're what they're potentially looking at but then when the edits there um obviously the producers are editing it in such a way that we don't know whether or not there was a more extensive critique given to the garment. Well, there almost Um, certainly was. Yeah. And I just think, um, I don't know. I think there's, there's, there's certain, it feels to me this season more than um, anything, it feels very, very clicky. It's, um, it's for instance, like um, Esme, um, she made one, um, she made one really, really cut and comment to Tony R and, she was stood quite away from him but he was not engaging with it at all she says do you um what was it exactly she says uh do you always talk to yourself Mm -hmm. and I thought oh okay 
and she just sort of like she was waiting for a response but there was just nothing he just continued talking to himself well to I, I was just you know i was actually saying out loud at the time blimey don't we all yeah. I can't yeah. imagine. I really can't imagine Esme in her work life or home life or any other not talking to herself because we all do it, don't we? You know. Oh, oh I think it was just a a, a funny off the cuff moment. My favourite moment in the whole show was when she twanged the waistband against yes. the... <laughs> against the model. Poor model. <laughs> yeah, whiplash. Where there's blame, there's a claim, people. <laughs> but it was quite a comedy moment, wasn't it? Was. it? It was. Yeah. I, think, I did I, think there, but for the grace of God. I think what they've done over the years is, yes, maybe on that first series, Stuart, it was maybe too technical. Yeah. But I feel as if it's gone completely the other way now. Mm. And, you know, on the transformation challenge, it was specifically about colour and rather than how they actually used, it was, it, it, it was the placement of the colour with the bags yeah. in the top that they made um, rather than what they actually did. And I just, in fact, Esme said it's crucial what they choose to put together. Mm. And I thought... But then, so why didn't Lizzie win? Exactly. Why didn't Lizzie win? Because that was not technically the best So. No. You know, there there were there were lots of loose threads around the bottom and things like that, which you could have picked up if you wanted to. But from the point of view of you're kidding me, that's from tote bags. That was so cute and stylish and beautifully shaped. I just thought it was wonderful. Now, Asthma's um, top, which you could very clearly see, I think, was very beautifully sewn, very technically beautifully sewn. But it was an absolute mishmash of colour and pattern. It didn't work for me at all. No. And I thought, for, technically, yes, absolutely. But from a style point of view, it no. was not, for me, the strongest. No. And they actually said, um, it's important that they combine the colour and the prints and crucial what they choose to put together. It goes back, though, that I know it's all about choosing the bags, but I was actually talking to Deborah, who's going to be a guest on our last show, and it is a race across the studio oh, for sure. to pick up the best one. So if you're young and fit, you've really got a better chance or you're closer to the to the pile. And so I do feel sorry sometimes when the because they do throw in those muddy colours and, and, mm. and colours that are not nice. Now, the problem being is that those colours, the judges don't like. So to me, don't put those in. Give everybody bright colours or give enough of the brights so the judges aren't going to be critical on that part of it. Because yeah. one of the girls who had the, it was like a tartan and a tiger print, she'd done a really, it was it Vicky, I think, it did a really interesting twisted back but the, the focus did. Oh, it was Vicky. Like the color. It was Vicky. Was Vicky. Yeah. And it didn't like the colour. So it was the colour, the colour, the colour. Mm. And Patrick did say the back is really good the way she'd, she'd woven it. Um, but yeah, I do feel it's all colour is personal at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah, because I loved the blue and yellow tartans together. I thought it was very Vivian Westwood esque. I thought it had a, a fabulous vibe to it, you know, and I thought was in terms of a colour combination was much nicer than some of the others. But they really, really jumped on her <laughs> for that just because Esme didn't like it. I mean, yeah, if, if it's going to be about the colour, then you've got to give everyone equal access mm -hmm. to everything, haven't you? Yeah. Um, but yeah. It's a really tricky one, isn't it? Is the show about style? Is the show about being a designer? Is it about being a competent dressmaker? Is it about being a personality? You know, the thing is, it's all of those things. And it's all of those things at different times. Mm -hmm. And the thing that creates the controversy in the show, in the judging, is when those different categories are applied. Mm -hmm because sometimes people get through because they've made big visual impact and the judges love it, but technically it's an absolute dog's dinner. Yeah. Other times people do something which is technically very well sewn, but <coughs> aesthetically <coughs> awful, and they get through on that. And sometimes it just does seem to be something else. But, you know, that's the magic of the show, I guess, isn't it? 
yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I mean, sitting watching an exam, which none of us would want to do. No, <clears throat> but I, I, there's there's some elements of um, for instance, um, like asthma is a, a really great sower, and I mean when you come to the um, <clears throat> the end challenge, she already I can understand her thought process about what she had chosen in the charity shop um because it almost emulated the purple and the black almost emulated a lace design so obviously she's from a certain culture where mm. they heavily use lace with um with um sparkles on it and that kind of thing um and a lot of drapey um fabrics so i understand why she was drawn to that particular one mm. but obviously um i just personally would not have chosen that um just because there was it was there were big gaps in between the crochet and it was never going to hold any structure it mm. you couldn't have you couldn't have even have given it structure um so i thought her her choice on those sorts of things were i mean she had a really she had a interestingly she's been consistent all the all the way through but she actually had a big sort of i felt a big sort of trip up or disadvantage that that's how it was edited anyway um but i just think because because of the because of the crochet that she had chosen i think so and i think also but that's the, her choice cho isn't it this is the thing it, it, it's the, it's the same as the you know the two drapey fabric for the trousers that that fove um made it was fove wasn't it who, who was, chose yeah. the very drapey fabric for trousers you know that that is part of the skill if you choose the wrong thing, then 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 you know maybe you're rightly criticised for it. And I think I think one of the other things that that particular challenge that they had to choose their own crocheted garment, so they'd had time to look at that, mm -hmm. and they do get an opportunity to to practice. Um, that's what they say that they get the opportunity to practice at home. What's the time, just interestingly then, on that one, because nobody ever really gets to find out. Yeah. At what point do you get told what that made-to-measure challenge is and how much time do you get to practice? Um, well, I mean, now I, I, I believe that the contestants actually have all of the challenges for the entire series right at the start. Okay. So, so you could argue that they have the most time to practice the later challenges and the least time to practice the first. Um, obviously, sometimes things change and challenges have to be altered and sometimes last minute. And sometimes that can be literally the day before the start of filming that the made to measure challenge has to be changed. Um, so then there's no time to practice. Um, and also from the point of view of use of time, do you, what do you do? It's a judgment call, isn't it? Do you think, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to be around week nine. I'm going to practice week nine's challenge. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to think, well, I'll tell you what, I'll wait until week eight. And if I'm still in it for week eight, I'll start looking at week nine, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think there's a great deal of time for anyone to practice anything. I'd be very surprised if any of those sewers had really gone the whole way to create an entire outfit out of a crochet blanket before they did that. I think a lot of them were just kind of, you know, probably look to see how it was to sew crochet. Um, I felt terribly sorry for all of them trying to sew through crochet blankets with a really basic sewing machine and no walking foot. I mean, did anybody research the show actually to see whether the machines were capable? Because it now didn't that, look like it. That, that is one of the, the, the bees I have in my bonnet is the sewing machines. Because you know, Stuart, that yes, I- Yes, me too. Sewing machine, uh, you know, um, orientated. So I do know that there are people in the background who are part of the sewing team who are supposed to give advice. and. Straight the way I've put on walk and foot, um, ballpoint needles if required. Mm -hmm. I do feel that Lizzie, who hand actually sewed and crocheted, she had a massive advantage because she was able to do that. And our red jacket looked amazing. 
There's also things such as, I saw one of the girls using masking tape to, to control the um, the edge of the crochet. She mm -hmm. could have used one of the Vlieseline, um tapes to do that. Mia actually interfaced all of her crochet. Um, it, it's a shame sometimes that they don't, I know we talk about the technical, but when you saw Mia had, uh, she basically interlined a whole crochet blanket. Now, she was able to do that for two reasons. Well, one main reason was that the crochet was actually quite Very close dense. together. Yeah. And yeah. so, therefore, the interlining on the back, you wouldn't see. Now, there are a couple of the Vlieseline interlinings. And for anybody watching, you need an interlining that's going to stretch with with the garment. You don't want it to be rigid. So, you could use some of <coughs> um, the nine, which is a lovely knit lovely soft and smooth on the skin or you could use the um, G770 which again is great for jersey fabrics and stretches now the, I just wish to a degree they highlighted that interlining mm -hmm. that if they just they used to bring up little bubbles or they had a little cartoon shall we say just to explain that and you're mm -hmm. quite right Stuart all machines will do all sewing but you need the right needle and the right foot and the right thread on the machines and you see them I mean Matthew God love him he broke three needles mm. he was going through a really thick seams he could have potentially Alice you talked about putting the seams on the outside or even butted the seams up and used a zigzag he could have used a seam tape at the back to keep them in position whilst he saw them. There was so much he could have done. And, I and do again, it really did come down to what kind of crochet have you chosen? What weight of yarn? And also what garment are you trying to make? I mean, for me, um, Mia's did really stand out and also Lizzie's, you know, I thought they both chose really well in terms of the garments. Um, Lauren, unfortunately, the, the, the trousers, with those big pleats mm -hmm. at the waist. I mean, the waist line was a bit of a horror, wasn't it? And oh. all those really bulky pleats, you know. But 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 interestingly, you know, um, the judges were just full of of praise about everything that was right. And 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 that's when Alistair, you know, you talked about a fuller critique. I would be very surprised if at the time. Esme and Patrick did not pick up on those, you know, gaffes, shall we say. But then it all comes down in the editing, doesn't it? Who's staying and who's going? And if you've sort of laid into somebody and told them all the things that's wrong with their, with their garment and then they stay, then it kind of leaves people scratching their heads a bit, perhaps. Did you notice, though, when the model turned around with Mia's, that the actual back of the hem was out by half a block. I rewound it. Oh, you didn't. But as the model turned, it was quite a short skirt she had on, but as the model turned around, there was a definite step up. Um, and I saw it because it was very near the end. And uh, anybody get the chance, just rewind it about 10, 15 seconds, and you can actually see that. And I thought, that is such a shame because they'd picked up on unlevel hems on Matthews and other yes. people's and yes. yeah, so it, they're not sometimes yes. they're not if an unlevel hem matters, then it must matter for everyone, everyone. Matters yeah. Until, yeah. yeah. You know, and it, and certainly, you know, when I took part in the B, you know, which was an incredible, wonderful experience. You know, I, I loved it. It was hard. It was challenging. And it certainly wasn't perfect. And, and nothing ever will be. But it was still wonderful. But, you know, I did. They asked for feedback afterwards. And um, the, the, the executive producer. And um, there were two main things I said. One of them was. You really must have a blind judging of something in the show. Because if you watch the first series again, you'll see that the judges are around for everything. From the second series on, they blind judge the transformation challenge. But in the first series, the judges were there for everything. And there's that halo effect, isn't it? And we all spot it. 
you know, I suppose when we talk about it, we talk about, oh, well, they've got their favourites, you know, but there are some people whose, whose work will always be interpreted more positively than others or more negatively than others because of where they sit in the hierarchy, in the judges' heads. I'm sure from week one, the judges like us watching at home have got ones we think you'll be in the final, you'll be in the final, you're going to be going week one or two. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, so to have blind judging was was one of the things that I said they needed. The other thing I, I always feel the show lacks, <clears throat> and they're perhaps trying, is a criteria for success. Mm -hmm. So in other words, what do the contestants have to do to be successful? Is it, do, is it necessary for the garment to be finished? Mm -hmm. Is it, because sometimes people get through with a half finished garment. Some people go home because the hem's not turned up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, which is it? Is style input, does style matter? And if one person doesn't lose any marks because they've used a completely plain cotton and someone else loses marks because they've used a wildly exciting patterned fabric but haven't matched it, do they, can they lose marks at someone else? Do you know what I mean? Are there marks for this or not? In which case, how many marks do you get for doing something completely plain navy? Yeah. And how many is it possible to lose because you didn't match your patterns? And I don't think anybody still really knows what they have to do mm -hmm. in order to survive, which I think is still a bit confusing. Yeah. I think it is confusing, but I think my sort of um, thing with it all is obviously they are given it. Now, so for instance, if I <clears throat> wasn't um, in, uh, I wasn't a professional in the field of sewing, um, if I was going on to a show like that, I would look at every single thing and I would go all the way through all the chance because I've obviously applied to want you don't apply for a show like that if you don't think that you've got a chance of winning or a chance of it making your life slightly um, different in terms of, I don't know, you might be, uh, I don't know, you might be a social worker that um, doesn't want to do social work anymore and thinks that, for instance, I want to, I want to do what I love at home I want to share my crafting experience and mm -hmm. like many of all all of us um sat here have actually done and achieved mm -hmm. so I think that there's a certain level of winging it which you can't really do you've got to have some sort of sense about um a lot of the for instance the a lot of the patterns um they can choose their patterns um on the end challenge so they've gone through that if they it, if they're there it's 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 filmed in a block so and we know that from um becky cole that you know segment you know it's there's certain chunks that are all filmed not necessarily in the filming world not everything's filmed in sequence it's you know it's all done in different um parts but I think you would slightly do a bit of homework in terms of what you're up against. And you would look and you would start. To, I would. This is my own personal opinion. I would start to take an interest in fabrics <laughs> and looking at what fabrics can and can't do. I, I just I just felt that that end challenge using crochet to create a garment. I'm not sure, for instance, that a lot of the things that were produced would be a wearable garment that somebody would choose to necessarily wear outside. Um, crochet is used heavily in the fashion industry, but it's mainly used for like overpieces and things like that, or an overlay. It's not necessarily used. For instance, when I designed um, and we had everything produced out in Peru, a lot of the um, the designs that I created for um, this brand, you know, they were heavily in uh, crocheted uh, lace on the top because in Peru, that's one of the real professional staple um, things. So mm -hmm. I just, I just, I would have used, in my own opinion, I would have looked for not necessarily the sort of big chunky wool crochet, for instance, my gran, and I've got it in a, a, a box at home, I've got this beautiful, beautiful tablecloth that 
is so intricately done. And I've also got the bobbin of yarn that was left and it's on an old wooden cone. Oh, lovely. And it is such a fine, fine thing. And my mum, when she was a little girl, she remembers my gran constantly sat there making this huge, it's not personally my colour because it's beige, <laughs> um, but... But you um, could dye it, presumably. Well, you could. Well, I, 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 I just don't. I don't have it out very often, just because I don't want. Um, because we've got an old Victorian house, and we've moths would just um yeah, make a beeline for right. it. Yeah. Um, but I would use something like that that would give you almost a structured flat base in which you could actually make a real wearable garment. For instance, yeah. it's difficult, isn't it? Because we don't know exactly what the contestants were told that they had to bring, and it may well have been that it had to be wool and it had to be a blanket, but you know, very specifically. Um, I mean, all the contestants have to do a plan of of every step of every garment that they're going to make in the in the um, made to measure challenge. But they also have to put in a proposal to the production team in advance of the show. So they have to say, this is the pattern I'm thinking of using. This is the fabric I'm thinking of using. These are my ideas. And the production company can approve that or not. Mm -hmm. so oh, that's interesting that's interesting so everything you see so for example if and i've thought this before if there's a particular challenge you know um made to measure where where they say you know i mean this fabric was never going to work was it this fabric was just never going to work um you know i've always thought well you knew you knew what fabric this person was going to use for this challenge because they told you weeks ago, this will be my choice of fabric. I last, guess- In the last seri series, the last season of Sewing Bee, there was one, and I can't remember the lady's name, but the, the fabric was just completely the wrong fabric. Was for that the, for the 1930s bias cut? I yeah. remember it was a stretch yeah. fabric, wasn't yeah. it? That, yeah, it was that's, exactly, that's exactly the um, occasion I was thinking of, Kim. Mm -hmm. Exactly that. The person had used a stretch fabric and had cut it on the bias. And, 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 and I remember at home thinking, but the challenge was to cut fabric on the bias to make a bias cut dress. And they have done that. The fact that the fabric also has stretch in it. You didn't say it had to be a historical piece, mm -hmm. you know, but but anyway, anyway, they, yeah. yes, they know. They yeah. know what, what fab people are going to be using. It's been really because they also have to, from a production point of view, for instance, licensed fabrics you're not you wouldn't be able to use on the BBC. Okay. So you would you would have there would yeah, be an element. Like that. Yeah. So for instance, with with stuff like that, um, then obviously, you know, them knowing um full well. Plus also they need to know what sort of haberdashery they'll need to provide, dependent on, you know, what the contestants are, are potentially gonna um bring in. Yeah. Um, so what did everybody think about um, Matthew leaving? Did did we agree with the choice? I didn't particularly like his um, harness, this um, the look, <laughs> this year. I didn't, I didn't, I, I was a bit confused about the, um, the choice of the crochet <laughs> that he uh, used for his harness this week, but God love him. But, um, but yeah, what did everybody think? Did you think that was fair? I think the judgment. I think the comment that I'm going to make was one of the things that specifically picked up on was these hems. And as I say, as Mia's model turned around, her hem goes back to what you said, Stuart. If you're going to put somebody out, don't get me wrong, there was a couple of other issues. Mm, but there was, absolutely. There was issues with everybody. But if you're going to really make a thing about one mm. particular thing, it should be said about everybody. Mm. I didn't think he would go out. I'll be honest with you. I thought... I thought he would have survived another week. I do think in his own admission, he's not the best sewer in the world, technically. However, he has tried so hard. He has pushed all of the boundaries that you can possibly push. And many years ago, and I've said this before, he <laughs> came to my shop and asked me if I knew a, a Mr. or Mrs. Cannybody who had no sewing experience who would go on. So really, Matthew ticked all of those boxes. And so therefore, if you to put him against asthma, for example, he is never going to have that technical ability now. He's going to grow into that. So mm -hmm. maybe 
I, I was I was surprised he went out. I didn't necessarily think he would go out. Um, I think they should have given him one more one more week at least to to have another another stab at it. Yeah, oh, just one quick thing. question, Stuart. When you applied for the B, did you have to, as part of the um, vetting process, did you have to send in an example of something you had already made? Yeah. So um, once you'd got through the very basic. Um, applications in terms of written application form, telephone interview. Once you'd got through both of those stages, the next stage was going to London. Um, Claire Louise Harding, um, who was the technical, the, 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 the sewing producer for the first four series, um, she was there and you had to take um, three sewn items and um, they had to cover a range of skills. Two of them had to be dressmaking. One of them could be something else. But there were particular things that you had to show across all of those, all of those three items. And they were critiqued in, in some depth. And then um, a later audition further down the line was effectively a sewing exam. Mm -hmm. So you know, 10 sewing machines, 10 sewers, 10, you know, brown manila envelopes on the desk and a camera crew. And we had three hours to make the pattern, you know, um, under sort of exam conditions or TV like conditions, I suppose. So, yeah, there, there, there's there's quite a few elements there. So, you know, I mean, just to pick up on what you said earlier about sort of everyone goes on the show thinking they can win it, don't they? I, I, I'm, I don't th I don't think that is necessarily in everyone's mind. I don't think I, I, certainly I didn't go along thinking I could win it <laughs> at all, <laughs> you know, and I and I imagine that there were other people there who went to represent, you know, they went to represent who they are and where they're at right now. You know, I mean, in a way, yeah, when you get there and you meet somebody who's who's sewn every single article of clothing that they've worn for the last 68 years, you think I'm probably not going to beat you, you know. Um, and there are there are some people, aren't they? Asthma, Lizzie, you know, if those two aren't in the final, then then, you know, I, I need my sewing bee radar mm. upgrading. So who do you think's got to win then? Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Um, who do you think wants to win? I don't see that everyone isn't trying their best. Of course they are. So everyone wants to win in that sense. You know, everyone wants to survive. But we all know that everyone bar three or four of them is going to be out before the end. So, and the thing is as well, you know, um, based on previous years, there have only been a couple of winners over the last eight series who have been real kind of front runners throughout. It would be lovely for a man to win. Lo wouldn't well, it? I would uh, love to see a man win. Well, a man has won in the past. Know, but in this series, I would love yeah. to see yeah. Would you? Yeah. Why, why would. particularly? I would because I think... Um, Whilst men in sewing, as a woman, I have a big thing about if a man does well in any craft, whether it be sewing, knitting or art, they're always up there. And women tend to be down here in in, in, in the, how famous they are, etc. However, we seem to have fallen into a bit of a, 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 a rut and the women seem to have been the stronger sewers throughout the previous series and I would really yeah. like to see we've got some really good good men in this particular series um who may not you be think we've got but do you think the men that are in this do you think Tony R and Tony W are two of the strongest sewers out I do, I do yeah do you I do uh-huh yeah I think that I think the I think they're under the radar a little bit in the, mm -hmm. the when, when it's edited. And of course, we don't know what happens, you know, in the room because we know what happens in the editing. I think they're keeping them under the radar. But I think mm -hmm. that, I mean, is it Tony R with a hat? Yes. It's Tony, Tony R with a hat. He had a bit of a nightmare. But, you know, it, it's like everything. You're under that time scale. You do one thing wrong and you think, I've either got to fudge this and try and yeah. get 
get a go. But normally does really quite well. Um, yeah. Tony, teacher Tony, he is he's a very good sewer. I think he's yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Tony W's got got a, a, a possibility of being in the final. I don't see Tony R in the final. Um, but for me, Tony W, just I want to see a bit more flair. I want to see a bit more boldness, <coughs> a bit more, you know. He reminds me of me, episode one, who's sort of deliberately trying to stay under the radar. And that's not a bad tactic, actually, because, because to survive the sewing bee and get into the final, you absolutely do not have to be the best sewer in the room. You mm -hmm. just have to avoid being the worst. Mm -hmm. They only send the worst sewer home, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, obviously, when it gets down to the final, you've got to be the best on the day. I mean, them, them's the rules. I don't necessarily agree with that, you know, which is why I think we've had lots and lots of potential winners who haven't won yeah. because they fell down at the final hurdle, which yeah. I think on balance is a shame, really. It's like taking an old school exam, though. You either failed it on the day or you didn't fail it on the day. There was no assessment. There was no there was no adding up your marks all the way through, you know. No, so. that's right. And of course, you know, the education system has, has, has largely ditched mm -hmm. all exams at the end because they're not representative of someone's real talent and abilities. Exactly. So it's the sewing. I mean, I don't know. At the end of the day, the sewing bee is a first past the post competition. And that is how it's done rightly or wrongly you know um but yeah in terms of survival yeah that's 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 how you make it i guess by not being the worst and some people trip themselves up by trying to be too impressive and they take too many risks and 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 then it matters yeah. and then they go home yeah i think and, what we've yeah, seen I'm... i think what we've seen this <clears throat> this week with matthew levy obviously Matthew, out of all of them, he had the biggest personality um, to watch, um, you know, with <clears throat> what he was wearing. Some days he'd come in in high heels. It would just it would just sort of alternate. And he was a big character in the show. So I'm a little bit surprised that he did go um, last night. Um, but I... I because just think, you think so, because you think they would keep him because of his personality. I think because it is because I think everyone's come to the consensus that it's not te it's not a technical um it's not like an exam it's not a technical program in terms of you know it's all being judged in a certain criteria just like you said there was no criteria when you were on as to how many points you could earn you know doing certain things mm. um but over the series that I have watched um it is all about you know like the the person a lot about is, is about the personalities and he out of this group he seems to have usually it's a bit unusual for um for the lineup here because he is from what i'm looking at he is the the one with, with that big personality the only one for me who comes Plays Lizzie. There's, there's a bit of something about you know, I, you know, I'd like to go out for dinner with Lizzie because I think she's she would be a bit bonkers and off the wall. Um, but I think now that that has gone, it'll be interesting to see in the next few weeks. Sorry, I am I'm looking at my um, I've got the names and the yeah. faces here just to remind me. But I think it'll be interesting to see over the next coming weeks whose personality actually comes out. But I was a bit I was a bit shocked that Matthew Matthew went. But it just shows you that you can have one bad week and it doesn't matter what you've done for the other three weeks. That's that's it. Well, it depends who you are. It depends who you are, doesn't it? Some people do have a terrible week and get away with it. Mm -hmm. Some people don't, you know, I think that's the bottom line. Um, I've got a question for, for both of you. How much weight do you think each of the challenges has and is it the same weighting that you would give to it so I suppose what I'm really saying is how much weight do you think the final made to measure challenge should have and does have 
Well, I'm about 13 and a half stone, 14 and a bad day. Um, but <laughs> I say, obviously, my scales are, are very kind at the minute. Um, I think the um, the first challenge, um, I think... I think everything, if I'm going to be truthful, I think it's the it's the very end challenge that everything rides on. And even though there is a mystery challenge at the beginning, mm -hmm. there is a slight element at the time of judging that one particular thing. And then I think that purely... It's almost a bit of a warm-up, isn't it, that first challenge? Yeah, and then I think the, the middle invention challenge, I think, is literally just there for a bit of fun because I don't think anyone actually takes it. That's Even the contestants, sometimes when you see it, I mean, they are only given 90 minutes, so it's whatever you can do in that time. I mean, they are literally all just, you know... And um, I'm not smacked with what some of them do. It's incredible. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's my view. I just think it, everything rides on the very the the final stage, mm -hmm. and I think that's ev that that's everything. That's all or nothing. And, I, I, and, I, and that that is that is what happens. I think it's a shame yeah. that's what happens because you can have contestants do really well, particularly in the first challenge. The second challenge is one of those that I could take it or leave it. It is a bit of fun. Um, if I was to get rid of something, I would get rid of that and maybe have a technical challenge in that middle. And then the third challenge, I think there's too much weight put on that to the point of you could be brilliant at the beginning and have a mare on that last one and you would go out. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if you have a mare on the first one and you're brilliant on the last one, you can stay in. So I do feel the need to balance it a little bit more because the whole priority of the show and the judging and we don't do reverse. That, that's something that really irritates me. I'd like to see that last challenge, that made to measure, who was, okay, whose ninth goes out last night, but rank them, even if it was the top three, because some of them really do deserve some more open feedback to the public as well. But before we go, because I know we've, we've oh, had a fabulous can I just Can what? I just pick up um, something that you just said there? So, for instance, if you look at the same production company does the... The Great British Bake Off. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the judging criteria there, it's a little bit more, um, it's a it seems to be a little bit more cohesive. So mm -hmm. for instance, you can see, and then at the end, before they do the showstopper, you know, they have a sit down with the two judges and say, mm -hmm. so who's in trouble, you know, and they're, they're they are, um, they're marking them from, you know, the, their mystery um invention um test and then the, the technical one in the middle like if it's biscuit week you know they are taking those into consideration through to the main showstopper um so i just think because it's the same production company obviously it's a, a bit poles apart and i would like to see more of the the, the bake-off judging criteria brought over to the zone because then i think it would be a little bit more fairer in terms of and i think that would open up a different conversation mm -hmm. before, <laughs> before we go last week we had our winner who commented and it was jeanette dodd so i'll be sending out some pleaseline products jeanette if jeanette if you can send me a private message or an email um with sorry send me a private message with your email address and then we can get your home address from there this week, we have got another Vlieseline product to give away. But if you like and share the YouTube videos, put some comments on whether you agree with what myself, Stuart and Alistair have said, then please, we want to hear back from you as well. And we'll announce the, the winner of the giveaway. We can't say it's a prize, Stuart. It's a giveaway. <laughs> giveaway. It's a giveaway. giveaway right? Can um, I just say as well, the final couple of moments made my eye twitch next week oh i know art art it's actually now i remember i think it was series three when the final mm -hmm. the final final garment was avant-garde and it was an absolute horror mm -hmm. so i think next week sewing bee will be entertaining if nothing else well it's it was Art Week. It's modernist skirt, a can canvas clothing for the transformation and the surrealist movement for the 
made to measure. And next week, we... I'm have... sure we'll all get lots of ideas, right? Oh, we? yes. But next week, if anybody's watching this, you need to tune in because we do have two special guests next week. Um, we have the fabulous Nigel May, who will have an opinion, I am sure. And Grace is actually joining us next week. So anybody who knows Grace, you need to watch because Grace will definitely have an opinion. So I am so looking forward to that. I think I'm in charge next week or probably Grace will be in charge next week. So, yes. Stuart, can I just say thank you so much? We were going to keep this quite short, but it's been so interesting listening to your feedback and behind the scenes. And, and actually, you've answered a few of the questions that we're, we're all sitting at home thinking, well, I wonder what they do with that. And I wonder how that did. So thank you so much for taking uh, time out. Now, mm. Stuart's going to be a Festival of Quilts. I will put the links on um, as to where he is. So if you are visiting Festival of Quilts in August, he has his own stand where you're going to be able to get his books and um, yarns and lots of other goodies and, and say hello to Stuart. Have you got Charles helping you? Charles will be there. That's very formal. Yes, yes, Charles will be there. And a few other friends will be popping in. And um, yeah, I'm also hosting the award ceremony on cool. Thursday. So it's free to come along in the main theatre. So if you want to come along to the award ceremony and see all the award winning quilts, then do come along. I think it's about 12 o'clock on the Thursday. Um, yeah, it'd be great to see you there. And any other time you can catch up with Stuart, of course, on Sewing Street as well. So, so just tune into Sewing Street again. We'll put the links in there so you can keep, keep an eye on that. So thank you from, from me. Uh, for, it's been a for pleasure. Thanks thank for having me. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.